gate. Sorry about that. Uh, we should be back live. Again, I had to stop. I wanted to say with the Twitter. And I could I should stop and check my text, but we'll keep it up. We'll keep it up for a little bit. We're, we're back here. Uh, we're at uh, 19th of Broadway here in the heart of Amsterdam. Not a whole lot going on. Save hope now we know Kathy. As uh, expected, the police are remarkably restrained today. If this would have been an Occupy event, I'm pretty sure they would have they would have had the Billy Clubs out and and they would have been telling us to get onto the sidewalk and. We did go past the bus on the march, right? They had one cop stationed at the front, and the other cop stationed at the, and they were all, right? But I don't expect the cops, we'll stick around, but I don't expect the cops to be making any arrests. Yeah, well, that was one of the good things about Occupy. I liked it when we were blowing pot smoke in the cops' faces. That was one of my favorite things that we did while we were there. I have to admit. <laughs> Yeah, I think stone cops are, are more or less apt to beat you. Marijuana has that effect on people. Got my phone back. Oh, good. I was going to ask you about that. They called my phone. The person was really nice. They we're still right, standing right 10 feet away. Uh huh. I could have done it. I actually could have done it. I, you know, I should have, actually. I'm sorry. I, actually, if you hadn't found it when you were coming back, I was thinking, you know, I'll stop the live stream and, and we'll try and call your phone up. Because it doesn't need to be up. To, my viewers know that, you know, that sometimes there's... I wonder if these cars are going to start trying to drive through us because there's really no barricades. There's, you know, they have all the barricades around Obama, but they have none to stop traffic on this street. Yeah, well, some dude in a fucking $35,000 Lincoln Navigator, right, that thinks he owns the road because he's got a car, a brand new SUV, right? Exactly. But he's turning around. I've actually had to stop the police at protests from running over people. And when I was when I used to ride my bike around all the time, that was part of my function when I went to protest was to keep the police from running over people. Right? I remember during the uh, the second Gulf War protest when we shut down the financial district. That that was my job. All day, I took it upon myself to make sure that yeah, that people didn't get run over by cars. Yeah, there was one or two incidences that I had with some motorists that were really irate, and people get in their car to get arrogant. They don't want to be interfered with. Right? Yeah. Well, each team was going to hit me and stuff, but I managed to calm them down and explain to them. No, this is this. I was riding a bicycle. I had a nice French bike at the time, and I was riding that around. Is that what led so, to your chair? No. No, I broke my leg, uh, I guess about 19, 20 months ago. Seven, seven uh, breaks in my my, my uh, fibula, and then uh, like a one major break in my tibia. And I'm getting to the point where I can walk again. So that's good. And I'm more and more wanting to get out of this fucking wheelchair, right? It's been my torture device for a long time now. And I could have gotten an electric chair, but I decided that that would give me less incentive to go out and walk again, you know, which is what I really need to be doing. Yeah. You know, of course, when I come out to demonstrations like this, I have to make sure that I've got somebody with me as an escort, right? Just to, you know, but I can make it home from here. This is only a block and away from... Actually, the BART station is right underneath of us. 
So. Although it gets really hectic, they sometimes shut down these 14th streets. Yeah, that's what they were. That, they had it shut down this morning. But 17th Street's just a, a little ways. I think it's 19. Or 19, yeah. No, 17 Bard Station's only two blocks away, so I'm not really that worried about it. Yeah, I'm starting to get healthy enough. I think I'm going to start traveling, you know, because I'm missing out on a lot of uh, financial opportunities. You know, that could be, I could take advantage of. And I'm going to be moving out of my building not that, not that distant of a time. So I'm probably going to uh, uh, resign my position from the, from the SRO collaborative. Not because I want to, it's just I have to move on and I can't continue to live in my building. It's, it's uh, I, I'm doing an awful lot. You think it's bringing you down psychologically? Well, yeah, I wake up every morning and I'm angry. And I really don't want to be in that headspace, you know. Because you know, I'm a mellow dude for the most part. I mean, I'm a revolutionary. I will I'll freely admit that, and I believe in direct confrontation with things. But uh, you know, when I have to wake up in my home environment and be angry every morning, it's it's not a good place to be. And it's just like the conditions in the building are de are actually they're getting worse, right? And I'm to the point now where I really see no other alternative. Then um, I have an attorney, and he's already aware of the situation, and just taking him to court. And uh, you know, this five. This is the THC building. Yeah, five or six figures, or you know, five figures will do a lot to uh, make me happy and give me and uh, give me to leave without, you know. And it's not just me; it's other tenants in the building that I'm trying to uh, that I'm trying to. Uh, Try to help out too, right? And so, if I do any lawsuits in my building, I'm gonna make sure I include all the disabled people. Well, I mean, you know. you're being a member of the collaborative, though. Doesn't that give you access to senior management? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And nobody's come at me with any cash offers yet, right? Because that's the only thing I'm really willing to talk about at this point, because everything else has been a lie about the building, right? That I've been told so far. So, I get, you know, I'm at this point where I'm almost at zero tolerance, and I'm willing to meet with upper management, but, right, they don't call me back, really. They call me, like, back twice, and I told them that emailing me would be preferable because I would like to have a record of any conversations that Is we it have. Is this general habitability issues? Yeah, serious ones, though. Yeah, serious ones. Right? Definitely. They violated the terms of my lease, and I really don't want to ultimately... The reason I don't feel bad about it is the THC is not ultimately financially liable on this lawsuit. It's the actual building owner, the just the manager of the building, yeah. So they're not responsible. And it's not really anybody's fault, but it's just the building, it's just they need to make a major investment in some of the infrastructure, and I really don't see them doing it. And a lot of it has to do with my personal health because now that I'm feeling healthier, you know, I'd like to move into a little larger place. But a housing situation is always rough in San Francisco, so. I'm in a community housing partnership building, and they're a little bit better in terms of maintenance and habitability. Well, it's, it's not so much the maintenance. I mean, we've got, like, people working in our building. There's at least four people in our building that are working in there every day. I mean, right. working selling drugs for people? Yeah, like we have two uh, janitors and two uh, people, uh, maintenance engineers, right? Oh, that are working on the building. That work on the building every day, right? And actually, they want to hire two more janitors. Um, and that'll go a long way to making the building more habitable, right? It's just filling those positions because they've actually been looking to fill the positions for a while now. And they haven't been able to fill them. And he was like, he doesn't even have an assistant that he needs, the manager, you know, and it's, I can't continue to live in a building that's going to be, you know, it's got this much problems, you know, I need more, I need my serenity again, you know. Is there any chance of moving to a better TAC building? Well, I don't know, at this point, I'm not really even willing to do that anymore. I've, 
I decided I gotta move out of the area and you know Can you like leave the city entirely? No, I'm gonna save the city. But you know, uh, more of a section eight housing like you know thing. And I know that those places exist. You, you know, have a voucher? Right. Yeah. Oh, well, you have a lot more yeah, I, I fully qualify for every every federal every federal disabled benefit that exists. Right. Yeah. And there's much better buildings you can move to. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. I need to move out. Yeah, get out of THC then. Yeah. But I still want to. I still have some projects I want to do with them. Like I offered to build them a website, uh, the SRO Collaborative, because. I don't know if you've been to their website, but you know it looks very. Yeah, it's 1990s. Yeah. Well, they have. They're, they're pretty active in their Facebook page. Yeah, but I've been kind of pushing, uh, pushing them to do it. And I'll do that for them. I like doing that kind of stuff. Anyways. Have they just turned you down? No, I, I'm gonna meet with uh, with uh, what's his name? Uh, no. Yeah, Randy. I gotta have to have a meeting with him. And something's gotta change in our building. There has to be a major investment in some of the plumbing infrastructure. Like, there's all these 1920s fixtures in our building, and they need to be removed and replaced with, like, low-flow showers and stuff. You know, just upgrade all the water stuff. Because, and nobody's using these tubs, right? Because there's no lock on the door, and and the bathtubs are usually not clean in the building to where you can use them. You go into the bathroom, the common bathroom, there's no lock on the door? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. That's awful. Right, yeah. That, that's considered not habitable. That's a threat to females, too. Yeah, I know. Well, the female bathroom actually has a lock on it. But the males don't. And uh, at any rate, I'm getting tired of that whole situation anyways. You know, I need to have my own uh, my own facilities. Because yeah, I know they're always going to stay clean. <laughs> yeah, I tell them to get it. Well, I'm down to no viewers here, so I think I'm going to stop my live stream.